Hello everyone, Minister Benitier. Today I'd like to share with you the story of Esther. Journey with me to find out how Esther became queen and how she changed the circumstances of the Jews. If you want to turn the tables on your enemies, this is a story for you. Queen Vashti refused the king. Now I'll be reading from Esther chapter 1 through to chapter 10. King Aserus had a feast in his palace, Shushan. He requested the presence of his wife, Queen Vashti, for she was beautiful. She refused the king's command. Therefore, he was very angry with her. As a result, the king's wise men gave him counsel saying that he should put away Queen Vashti and give her estate to someone who is more worthy. The king agreed and did accordingly. The Search for a New Queen The king's servants advised him to search for a new queen. Hence, they gathered all the fair young virgins onto the Shushan palace and began the purification process. The maiden who pleased the king would become the queen. In Shushan, there was a certain Jew named Mordecai. He was carried away from Jerusalem into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar. He raised his cousin Esther and took her for his own daughter. Esther was one of the maidens that were brought into the king's palace. She was treated with kindness by Haggai, the keeper of the woman. Mordecai warned her not to reveal her identity, and she obeyed. Mordecai also checked on her every day to find out if she was doing well. Esther became queen. After the 12 months purification process of the maidens, they were allowed to see the king. Now when it was Esther's turn to see the king, she obtained favor in his sight more than all the other virgins. He loved her so much that he set the royal crown upon her head. The king made a great feast thereafter to celebrate his new queen. Mordecai saved the king's life. Two of the king's chamberlains were not happy with his decision to crown Esther, so they plotted to kill him. Mordecai became aware of it and told Esther. Esther reported the matter to the king and an inquiry ensued. They were found guilty and therefore hanged on a tree. This account was recorded in the book of the Chronicles before the king. Haman's Promotion King Hasiris promoted Haman, his advisor, and set him above the princes. He commanded that the people should bow to him. Everyone showed reverence to Haman except Mordecai. The servants asked Mordecai why he refused to obey the king's commandments. They tried to persuade him to bow, but still he refused. Hence, they reported the matter to Haman. He observed that it was true and was full of wrath. Haman's Conspiracy Against the Jews Haman began to plot in his heart how he might destroy Mordecai and all the Jews that were living in the kingdom. Haman told the king that there were a certain people in his kingdom that doesn't observe his law. As such, he proposed to have them destroyed. The king agreed with Haman, therefore the law was passed to kill all the Jews on a set date and time. This decree was published in every province so that the people could prepare for it. When Mordecai learned what was done, he rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes. He went out in the streets and cried loudly and bitterly. There was also great mourning among the Jews. 
Esther's maids informed her that Mordecai was wearing sackcloth. She became very worried and sent a servant to inquire of Mordecai what was happening. Mordecai told the servant all that transpired and gave him a copy of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy the Jews. Mordecai also told the servant to ask Esther to make petition unto the king for her people. He told Esther the words of Mordecai. Esther was hesitant at first because the king didn't request her presence for the past 30 days. Also, there was a law that could put her to death if she went to the king unannounced and he didn't hold out his golden scepter. Mordecai was told Esther's concerns, but he was adamant that she needs to intervene in the matter to save the Jews and herself. Queen Esther declared a three days corporate fast. After hearing Mordecai's response, Esther felt more courageous and commanded the Jews to do a three days dry fast, that is, no food or water, for three whole days. On the third day, Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house. The king saw her and held out his golden scepter. Esther went closer and touched it. The king asked her what was her request. She responded by inviting the king and Haman to a banquet she prepared. Queen Esther prepared two banquets. The king and Haman attended Esther's banquet. At the banquet, the king asked Esther what is her petition and request. Esther responded by asking the king and her man to attend another banquet. She promised to make her request known on that day. Her man left happily and told his friends and wife about his success and that Esther invited him to two banquets. Haman also mentioned the contempt he felt when he sees Mordecai. His wife and friends advised him to build a gallows to hang Mordecai. Haman agreed and caused the gallows to be made. On that night, the king could not sleep. Hence, he requested the book of Chronicles to be read before him. During the reading of the records, Mordecai's deeds were made known to the king. The king inquired of his servants what reward was given to Mordecai for saving his life. The servants told him that nothing was done. The king honors Mordecai. The king inquired who was in the court. The servants told him that Haman was standing there. Haman was there to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai. Haman went in to see the king. The king asked his advice about what he should do to honor a man in whom he delighted, meaning in whom he is well pleased. Haman advised the king to allow the man to wear the royal apparel of the king, including the king's royal crown, also to command one of the king's most noble princes to array him in the royal apparel and bring him on horseback throughout the city. The King Honors Mordecai Thereafter, the king commanded Haman to do the very thing that he said unto Mordecai, the Jew. Therefore, Haman arrayed Mordecai in the king's royal clothing and brought him on horseback throughout the streets of the city. Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but her man returned home mourning. Can you imagine how he must have felt, knowing that he went there to seek permission to kill Mordecai, but he ended up parading Mordecai throughout the streets of the city. Haman told his wife and all his friends what happened to him. 
his wife responded that he shall surely fall before Mordecai. Esther's Petition and Request The king and Haman attended Esther's second banquet. The king asked Esther again, what is her petition and request, and that whatever she asks will be done even up to half of the kingdom. Esther answered and said, Let my life be given to me at my petition, and my people at my request. She explained further that she and her people were to be destroyed. Haman is hanged. The king asked who it was, and Esther revealed that her enemy was none other than Haman. Upon hearing this, the king was full of wrath, so he went to the palace garden. He returned and saw her man pleading for his life on the bed where Esther sat. The king said to him, Will you also force the queen before me in my house? As he said those words, they covered his face. The king was informed of the gallows which Haman built at his house to hang Mordecai. The king said, Hang him on it. Therefore, they hanged Haman on the same gallows which he had built for Mordecai. Mordecai and the Jews exalted. After the king's wrath was pacified, he gave the house of Haman to Queen Esther. Esther revealed to the king who Mordecai was to her, and the king gave him his ring that he took from Haman. Thereafter, Esther made petitions and requests to the king to reverse the decree that Haman devised. The king granted her permission to have a new decree written that would allow the Jews to defend themselves against their enemies. All the leaders of the provinces helped the Jews because they feared Mordecai. In the end, the Jews slid all their enemies, including Haman's ten sons, who were hanged upon the gallows. After the Jews' great victory, they rested and made it a day of feast and gladness on the fourteenth day of Adar, which is March. This celebration was later declared the Day of Purim, derived from Pur or Lots. This year, Purim was on March 16 to March 17, from sunset to sunset. It is remembered as the day when God turned their sorrows into joy and their mourning into gladness. On this day, the Jews would rest, feast, and send gifts to the poor. A prayer for God's favor and blessings. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Only you are worthy of our praise and glory. Lord, forgive us of all our sins and iniquities, as we forgive those who sin against us in Jesus' name. Lord, bless us and keep us. Cause your face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us in Jesus' name. Lord, you said in your words, according to Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Father God, let us find favor in your sight and the sight of men. As you did for Esther, Lord, do it also unto us. Drive out our enemies from before us and destroy them, never to rise again in Jesus' name. According to Psalm 84, 11, the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord, give us peace, prosperity, and protection, and bless us continuously in Jesus' name. Give us revelation and let your blessings overtake us so that our children and their descendants are blessed. For the blessing of the Lord it make it rich and he added no sorrow with it. Father God, bless us and in multiplying, multiply us as the stars in the heaven and the sand upon the seashores. Turn every curse and our ways into a blessing in Jesus' name. Our sins are forgiven and we are blessed. Let all generations call us blessed. Let all the nations of the world call us blessed. Let our family, relationships, health, finances, and ministry be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May the favor of our God rest upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you.